guys, Robert and Carl here, and you may think at this point that there's nothing left to work on on the truck, but don't worry. There's there two parts to every car, and if you watched our other video, you know that we're focused on the rear, the rear end today. Uh, after two months of stalling, and trust me, I had a lot of bad excuses, we are dropping that out, swapping that out, and swapping it in with, it's under wraps here with the Junkyard 8.8. So today's video, we'll be uh, diving into this, seeing what the uh, all the interior mechanics look like, and hopefully putting this on the truck. How much did you pick this 8.8 up for? Shoot, how much was it? I think it was like, I think it was like less than 200. Yeah, it was, it was less like than 170. It was 170 and then a core charge. And then a core charge, which we stalled ourselves out of the refund for. Correct. Let's see if anything's living in this. Nope, yep, yep. Wildlife. Oh, something's living in there too. He's gonna be, he's gonna be in for a bit of a rip rock and roller coaster when we put this thing back together in two years. There you go. Well, I just upset the. You really just upset the spider. I promise you, we love nature on this channel. Yeah, we have a bunch of hiking videos to make up for it. So this is actually the first time we've even had the tires off of this truck, which is incredible because we've owned it for oh, like what a year and a half. Sometimes you just don't need to do wheel uh, wheel well, tire it's got brake bigger maintenance. problems, like the fact that it you know was bad everything was bad wow those are some puny ass brakes so we're just going to set this underneath the truck uh it makes robert feel better i don't think it'll matter so we went ahead took the wheels off and we're hoping that gives us enough play to be able to bring the axle down and actually take it off just for here so just for just fun before we actually put it on the car we're going to go ahead and take a look at the inside Good, it's good, it'll come right off. This looks like it just like it does in the Chris Fix video. Yep, other one does too. Oh, you can actually see the yeah, that's cool. Okay, clutch plates are like right in there. Then, man, this looks pretty good, huh? Yeah, it wouldn't look like it uh, from the outside. So in case you're thinking, Robert, how much of a difference could there really be between a Ranger 7.5 and a Ranger 8.8 .8 rear end? Well, let me just show you one of the many things that's different about it. So this is the brake pad on a 7.5. Haven't taken it off yet. This is the brake pad on an 8.8. .8. So if I put them right side by side, it is, I'm going to say another 15% longer and 10% wider, maybe. No, actually more than that. Another 20, 30% wider. Than the pad that actually comes on the 7.5 i'd imagine this probably does a lot for if you're towing something and you got to stop i mean you got a lot more a lot more material here to stop with so on top of it having a limited slip diff and stronger gears it's also got these absolutely massive pads it's really hoping we can get away with taking the brakes off of this car without actually having to fully disassemble them uh, since we're taking the whole axle out anyway unfortunately the way the parking brake is wired in going to make that quite difficult. Uh, since we have to reuse this, I'm going to go ahead and try to pull this out. Probably going to have to dis disassemble most of this to be able to even do that though. This is probably the most dry rotted tire ever. It's totally unsafe and we would never actually drive with it, but it's cool to look at. It's so cracked. It's been bouncing around on the back of the truck and it didn't blow up, so I guess whatever. It's our, since ours was a 7.5, the brakes don't fit, so we gotta buy a whole new brake system. We left the other one at the junkyard. Diff is drained. Took a trip to the auto parts store for three essential ingredients of a diff job. Seal. Friction friction enhancing fluid for the clutch discs in the limited slip diff. Apparently, apparently it also helps with like there was a chatter problem with these, so they said That's what it says on the box. And then uh, we have 80W90. This may look familiar. We've gotten smart this time and we're taking the shocks out first. Last time we didn't and it was a huge mistake and the whole rear end was just twisting itself freely. It was very annoying. Very surprising. <laughs> 18 mil.
we still have this bolt in, but we actually took the top of this uh, shock off. So when we drop the diff, this will just fall off. Really all we have left is we gotta pull the um, drive shaft off, get the brake lines off the top. The shock's down now, yeah. Oh, that was easy. Huh, so by chance, the other shock just decided to come out. That's nice. Wanna show us what you're working with? <laughs> Got wiggle joint to a uh, step down to a step down to a 12, uh, 12 point, 12. Our shaft's out. I'll let Kyle go ahead and do this before we put it on the car. So this is his first time, so be sure to ridicule him in the comments about it, about how you've done a better job. It's actually gonna be really easy to get this on. I just looked under there. I stayed at Holiday Inn Express last night. Wait, what? I stayed at Holiday Inn Express last night. This would be easy. Is that a joke? Yeah, yeah. You guys want to kiss? No. But we did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. So basically what we're doing here is just letting a bunch of air into the brake system and we'll just figure out how to fix that later. So we're probably gonna need a brake bleed tool to fix this, but we have to take the brakes off in order to, I'll put the new, <laughs> the new brakes on. Are these coming off better than the other ones were? Yeah, this is very easy. So this should be the last part. We're just taking the one bolt that's holding this whole brake system in out. I'm gonna go ahead and just get this diff off, which I'm pretty sure it's pretty much off at this point. There's just this that one good. plug back yeah, there. Yeah, this is plug. So once we get that plug out, we're able to just pull the rest of these these two bolts out and she'll drop right down. All right, so there should be one bolt left and this thing should be ready to fall. I don't know how it's just floating there. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah, it's just sand. It's rough. It's coarse. It gets everywhere. I don't like sand. It's coarse rough and irritating and it gets everywhere oh pretty well i'd say all right so we don't know much about shocks i'm gonna be honest but, but we don't think that they should be able to do this yeah we don't think that you're supposed to be able to, able to freehand push them all the way together That's yeah it. it's it's not sounding good so it's doing that Thing. So this is this is this is our ending point for the day. I think we were a little too. What had happened was what happened was we were not prepared because we had forgotten how much stuff we actually needed to buy to do this job. So we just did it. And I think we just assumed that we were like nobody had said anything about the suspension, and so we kind of just were like, whatever. We didn't want to bring it up, you know, because we both wanted to work on it today, <laughs> and we found out how bad it was. Current state is. I put this under the. I'm gonna put this somewhere. And so, I'm gonna clean up and get dirty again. Oh. With that, we'll see you guys in the next one when we actually have the parts to put it together. So, maybe. Maybe. See you next time. But we forget more.